Today we're taking a look at the Nord FPV Nord 5 HD frame kit and this one here caught my attention because of its attention to details, whether it be aesthetics including cable management down to the frame design to reduce vibration and resonance. So let's take a closer look at this premium frame kit and see what you get. Okay so here's the packaging here for the Nord 5 HD frame kit and it looks pretty straightforward in their signature colors here, this burnt orange color with the Nord FPV on the top here. Besides that nothing else on here, pretty straightforward packaging. So let's open this up and see what we have inside. this nice kind of vacuum sealed frame and then all the accessories and pieces for the frame kit. Pretty straightforward, very minimalist right here. So let's get this thing open and take a close look at this frame. Let's get all these carbon pieces out of here. Really nice. Now you have a lot of TPU parts on here and this can vary based upon your VTX, whether you go with DJI, Walk Snail, or some other manufacturer. And that's for good reason because this will make for a perfect fit when you do finish this build. So let's take a look at some of these parts and see why this frame kit is so special. Now you have your bottom plate here, you have your top plate here, so you gonna have a sandwich plate here as well to put the arms through. Talking about the arms, you have these nice arms here, five and a half millimeters thick. So really good for a freestyle drone, very durable. And the cut on here and the finish on this is really, really nice, guys. Now, they've thought about a lot of things in the design of this, and we'll talk about it once we put this frame kit together. So with that said, let's begin the assembly process and see how this frame kit is going to look. I'm going to start with the bottom frame here and work my way up. So here's our bottom plate here, and the first thing you want to do is put your bolts in here to mount your stack, whether it be the ESC or flight controller. Now, you have an inner hole and an outer hole. The outer hole here is for a 30 by 30, which we do have, and you have the smaller one here or the inner one for the 20 by 20. The big difference here is that the 20 by 20 does not have the threads on here, but the 30 by 30 has a thread, which is pretty cool because once you insert these bolts in here, these bolts will not back out and will not come out. So it will stay there. So if you do want to turn your bottom plate left and right, these bolts are not going to come out. So let's put these four bolts in here and then we should be on our way. Now you wish you had a power drill. Now these bolts on here are pretty cool. They have thread lock on here, which is pretty awesome. That's another little detail here that they included. So that's amazing. And these holes here are also recessed so it can fit as flush or as tight as possible with the frame. So there's less moving parts or less vibration. It's a really cool design and a lot of thought went into this whole frame design. You'll hear that more and more as we go further in this assembly. Now you have these bolts on here. We have two different lengths. You wanna have the shorter one for now and these little spacer or washers on here. Now this is a very intricate design here or a very important step. This washer here is pretty cool because this is gonna distribute the pressure on the arms to the bottom plate. Now we know that having a one piece bottom plate is good for resonance and vibration, but for durability, if it does become broken, you have to replace the whole bottom plate. So a lot of manufacturers are going with separate arms, including this kit right here. And that's why we have these washers on here so that we can distribute the pressure or the clamping force on a greater surface or a greater part of the bottom plate or the arms as well. So now it's as simple as just put this on here, line the holes up, and you wanna use the inner holes here. And one thing you're gonna notice here is that this is also threaded on the arms as well. The arms actually has threads as well. So we'll do that for the other arms as well. All right, so it's coming together. All right, so we have the four arms in here. That's how it's gonna look. Okay, so as you can see, these arms are moving around, jiggling left and right. So what do you do? You get this jiggle key and that keeps the arm straight. That's what they call it, it's a jiggle key. And I'm gonna try to put this in here as best as I can. Make sure it gets in there. Oh, there it is. Wow, there you go, it, it did go in there. So now that this jiggle plate is in here, we're just gonna tighten down the, the bolts. All right, there it is. That's pretty nice and secure. Okay, now that we have our arms on here, you can see the design of it really nice. You have these washer with the bolts on here. It looks pretty good. And you can see how this is gonna work. You have these bolts on here and they're a little bit protruded above the surface of this bottom plate here or the sandwich plate but you can see we have some holes here as well so these are going to fall right in here and it's going to be a smooth and tight fit so it's going to be as easy as just laying this down and there you go it's pretty flat now this brings me to a really important point guys now if you are building your drone right now as you do it this is a really crucial point because of the wire management. We talked about this being a clean build. The aesthetics on this drone is really, really nice. And the way they do it is by hiding some of the wires. 
And by hiding the wires, you have to plan ahead before you actually assemble this. Before you attach this sandwich plate to the bottom plate here, this little duct right here, this little tunnel, if you can see that, that's where you're gonna route your wire for your camera. Now, if you're using an analog camera, they have really small connecting points, but if you're using a digital camera, like say HD Zero or even DJI, it's a pretty wide uh, connection point with maybe 30 or 15 pins, like a MIPI cable, and it won't pass through here after you put these two plates together. So if you don't get this step here correctly, you might have to remove the sandwich plate and then reroute your cables in here. So as I said before, we're just gonna put this on here. Then we're just gonna use our longer bolts to secure the plates together with these outer holes right here. So we use the shorter bolts for these inside one. Now we're gonna use the longer bolts for the outside one. And it might require some wiggling to get the screws to go through, the bolts to go through. That's understandable. There you go. All right, here you go. There's your frame, your bottom plate is almost officially done. But if you look through here, you can see a little gap in there where you're gonna attach your wire for your VTX. So you can see this is pretty good. You have your back plate right here for your VTX and then your front plate here for your camera. Okay, now that we have the bottom plate fully assembled here, you can see how sturdy this is and you can see the benefit of having these little washers on the bolts. This thing is really, really sturdy and this thing is not going anywhere. Next thing is to put the top plate on here. And before we put the top plate on here, we need to put the actual standoffs. And obviously you can see there's a height disparity right here. You can see on the deck, you can see the front is actually lower than the back. So the top one will require a longer standoff and then the rear is the shorter ones. So look at the bolts and we can put the long ones or tall ones in the front. We'll just screw that on. And that's gonna require four of them. All right. And then for the back, it's gonna be the shorter ones. So let's get these bolts as well. All right, and that's gonna require four. Now, as you're tightening this down, you wanna have the flat part of this standoff facing forward and back. And you'll see why here in a few moments. Looking really good. Now the back ones, I'm not gonna tighten because I forgot to actually put this on here. And this same, bolt is gonna hold it. So, um, if you wanna be technical about it, then let's just do it properly so we can get it right. So what we wanna do here, as you can see, is just put this in here first, and that's gonna cover the wires going to your receiver. The receiver is gonna be attached back here. Now this TPU here is really nice looking. Quality is good, and we'll talk about it a little bit later when we have to add the ones for the motors because it's not your average plastic TPU part. All right, boom. Looks good, pretty level. Now we have these TPU parts here and we wanna put this like this. Now this TPU here has a little slit that's cut out and as you can see it's flat with the surface. That's the reason why you wanna have these facing forward to back. And for two reasons, one for this, obviously. So we're just gonna slip this in here. And you can see that goes in here. And the other one is the same way. Forward to back, slip this in here as well. That's the first reason. The second reason you will have this flat place here or this flat hex facing forward is for the camera mount. When you mount these camera mounts on here, you wanna make sure that this flat piece is right on here. If not, it's not gonna fit accurate. Wow. Jeez, it's tight, but that's how it was designed to fit. But it fits in there pretty well. But they say that because of this tight fit right here, that also adds to the structural integrity of the frame as well. Okay, so we have our plastic TPU parts on here, both for the side plate and we have our camera side plates here as well. I wanna add this last piece here before I add the top plate, which is the TPU mount here for your antenna for your VTX. This one here is for the DJI air unit. And that's it, line this up. And that's that, we're just gonna put two of them for now. Put one right here, one right here in the corner. All right, obviously you have what, one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six more, so you can, six more for the other standoffs. We're just gonna put two on here just right now for mocking this up. You can see how it looks. 
pretty nice. We just have a few more TPU parts. This one here is for the camera to adjust the camera. This face is down. And this is gonna look really nice on the side plate here. And if you need any extra parts, they have them on their website. You can print them out yourself or you can buy them. And look at that, that looks really good. Okay, last but not least, we have these TPU parts here for your arms, these feet here. So it's like a skid plate. And these things look like TPU, but they're actually not. These are nylon with carbon fiber or glass. So this thing here is really strong. Now, the reason they went with the carbon fiber and glass in here is to make this thing more stiff. Because sometimes with the TPU parts, these things are very flexible, which is good. But once you put these on here, line them up and put the screws or bolts through here, then that can compress and give, have some give so the motors aren't really sturdy. With this piece here, it's a little bit tighter, a little bit stronger, and that's gonna create a stronger bond with the motors to the arms of this drone. So obviously we don't have the motors here right now, we'll put them on once we put the motors on here. And they're the same color, I wish they were a little bit, maybe the same accent color like the orange on here. But regardless, it looks really good. So here's the drone right here, guys. Now, after seeing all of this, you can see the time, energy, design that they put into this drone to make this thing fly really good, really stiff, reducing the vibration. And hopefully that pans out once we put the parts in here and take this for a test flight. But you can see all the parts in here. And yes, I would say this is a premium drone, guys. They put a lot of thought into this, really thick arms. These uh, hardware on here aren't really the traditional hardware you find on traditional drones. They put a little bit more thought, a little more energy in making this uh, a stiff and sturdy drone, guys. So what do you guys think about the Nord FPV Nord 5 frame, guys? This thing here looks really good. It's the business. Aesthetically, it looks good. I'm sure once I get the electronics in here, um, it's gonna look even better with the props. It's gonna look like a killer drone, guys. So let me know what you think about this, and I'm sure you're asking me what am I gonna put in here, what flight control I'm gonna put in here, what ESC, what props, what motors, what VTX am I gonna put in here, guys? I have the all ready to go. I've been accumulating some parts for a while, and this thing is ready to go. I have a few of the parts here. Everything is right here, ready to go. In the next few videos, we'll be doing a build video on this one, so you definitely don't wanna miss that. This is gonna be my premium drone of the fleet. I have some other drones in the back I use for freestyle training, some for long range flying, but this one here is gonna be a premium drone with no compromises. It's gonna have everything that I want to fly this drone, guys. So if you wanna see those videos, hit that subscribe button there for you to be notified whenever I do drop that video. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.